doing so well in school and my like test scores are so high that I was getting academic scholarships way before basketball scholarships. So the way uh, basketball works and coaching is a lot like in business. You have to budget the money that you're giving and that you have. So he accounted for me having that academic scholarship. He's like, great, Gary, amazing. He's good. And he has an academic scholarship so I can pay less for him and go use that money for somebody else. So when I lost the academic, he was like, hey, you know, I spent that money, <laughs> so I can't really give it to you since you lost it. Thanks all for tuning into Dreamcatchers, where we make things happen. Dreamcatchers was formally launched to unlock the hidden potential in successful, self-motivated individuals who desire to take their life's work to the next level but need supports above all. We are a collective group of professionals with various backgrounds that use our talents to assist those individuals in realizing their wildest dreams by providing education, inspiration, and direction. This podcast is where we share the lessons we've learned along the way to catching our dreams and give you some context around the how and the why to each approach to put you further ahead on the journey to catching your dreams. Are you ready? Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Dream Catchers Podcast. It's your host, Jerome, and I got the special opportunity to have Derek Pope with me today. Met Derek a few weeks ago at the powwow at the mountaintop, and recently he reached out. He was like, man, I've been listening to the podcast. I done made this amazing video for you guys. I need to be a, a guest on the Dream Catchers Podcast. Derek, yep, how's yep. things down there in Georgia, man? Pretty good, man. It's been pretty busy since we had the the powwow we've all been taking some good action i've been loving it you know so definitely definitely pushing towards what we talked about so wait 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 where did where'd you get that red pill shirt from man tell us <laughs> <Let> me, <laughs> what are you doing where'd you get this shirt this, from this shirt is nice huh yeah this yeah. Shirt is nice. yeah <laughs> so um you know howard conyers i don't know if you had a chance to you know, get him on here yet, but a real great guy that was a part of powwow as well. Um, we were down there, I guess, like he said, I showed up as the videographer. I was not supposed to be a part of this powwow. Um, could not help but get sunk into it. It was that powerful. Um, so I shared a little, you know, shared a little connection with Howard and he actually gave me his shirt. He wanted me to have it. Um, he's real big on mentoring. That's the power of the powwow. He's actually big on mentoring young young professionals in videography and creative. So that was just, just the power of that connection. So that was that was great. Howard gave you the shirt off his back. <laughs> off his back. That's that's he really he gave me the shirt off of his back. That is that is the connections that you make. That's the type of genuine people that you have there that are looking to make that type of statement. You know, so and I had no problem accepting it. looks good on me. I think how it might maybe a little better if you listen to this. <laughs> so. <laughs> now, Howard is down in New Orleans, man. He listens to every episode. If something's off on the audio, he makes sure to let me know. <laughs> you know, he's got that attention to detail and that, that high level of quality that he expects. So yep, yep. got him and a few other listeners that if I don't do something right, I hear about it immediately. So, <laughs> You know, we, we got to know you a little bit at the powwow, but the guests don't have the benefit of knowing who Derek Pope is and what he's been doing or what he's done. So do me a favor and kind of run us through the story. How did Derek get to be the founder and leader of High Arc Media? All right. So right now it is 2019. I'm two years heavy into this videography business. Um, I've shot video my whole life and played basketball my whole life as well. So I recently just finished playing basketball in Germany. And this business actually started out as me doing basketball highlights and videography and really trying to make that a creative business. Um, but I realized it was so narrow and, and I couldn't really take it all the places that I wanted. Um, and by that, I mean, I couldn't, help as many people as I wanted I couldn't tell as many different stories and that's my biggest thing why I'm in this business telling stories there's two sides to my business I help you know agencies and businesses not only tell quality stories but use those stories to actually get true revenue and not just have oh what 
big expensive video and no profit and that's that's the one side and the other side that's developing is the creative narrative story where i'm looking to really truly impact lives and tell meaningful stories that that really change lives so that's that's where that that's where i am with that but you know this just over the span of my life you know it's who i am um i i came out the womb as a creative you know um me and my father all the time we would just get together and do different animations we had dreams of having our own animation company i was drawing every day I actually won i was <laughs> in elementary winning awards for writing so that creative gene has always been there i had a huge growth spurt got to six five couldn't help but play basketball <laughs> and that that took that consumed a lot of my life but creating video i was always acting and movies writing not not so much movies but in, in school films different things like that so that that creative gene stuck with gene stuck with me throughout my all of my basketball life and i got to a point with playing and just so you guys can know a little more i played for since i was about eight years old all the way up until i was 23 years old i'm now 25 so um I turned 26, October 26, but so I play, I was playing and I realized I want to have a bigger purpose, a much bigger purpose than just even playing basketball. I realized I could have played professionally, but, and, and no knock on those guys that are professionals. They inspire people as well. You know, they inspire people to push, to want to be like them, but I wanted to have a bigger purpose as far as more than just making the next LeBron James, but you know, inspiring people, inspiring multiple people to be what they want to be and and be great people as in the realms of their relationships, finance, treating others, politics, whatever it is, so I can tell multiple stories. I wanted to have a bigger purpose than just sports. That's I could I could talk all day. I don't want to <laughs> about what I'm looking to do. So no, I mean that's what this is about, right? So Let's let's dive into that because I think what you're describing is scale, right? You you want to you want to have scale, you want to have reach, and you know, mm -hmm. dribbling a ball or dunking or some of that other stuff. I'm not saying it's beneath you, but you think you have a higher mm -hmm. call, and I can appreciate that. You know, one of the mm -hmm. stories that I tell pretty often is my mom said, "Don't just be an entertainer," right? She wanted me to go do something that required more than you know making people laugh or smile or giggle or stare at you in awe and so yeah. I, I appreciate your desire to do that and it was a seed that was planted in me when I was you know probably three or four maybe even five because uh, you know everybody wanted to be like Mike or the modern yep. day Mike <laughs> that is LeBron um, yep. and it was crazy because my mom was like well you don't want to play basketball or football because the careers are so short you want to play baseball if you're going to play pro sports but I really want you to go do something else other than be a entertainer. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, there's a reason why those folks are so highly compensated, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, money's only going to make so much difference after you get to a certain point. So, ah, yeah. uh, man, there's so many different places I could go on this mm -hmm. conversation. <laughs> um, and we're early in, but I'm going to go straight to it, man. So you had, a defining moment and it's what I consider the red pill moment um, for you just because I feel like I know your story pretty well and that was when you decided to stop playing basketball and pursue this media thing full time so what got you to the place where you were able to make that jump and what do you think now that you're on the other side of that decision one thing I will say um and and this is just a little introduction to before i get into all of that <clears throat> Men mentors in basketball and that business have been the sole thing to get me where i need to be so for anybody listening don't shy away from having a mentor or a coach and that's one thing i learned in basketball i was always coached um and you'll you'll come across good coaches bad coaches so you know basketball really built the framework for the way i run my video production business so um 
I actually started out when I was finishing up basketball, I started creating videos for social media. Those started blowing up. I got a lot of attention there um, just through creative videos and being able to tell my story and add value to the people that were looking to learn from me. Um, and, and from there, I started being able to afford to get better equipment. Um, <clears throat> I got better equipment and started, you know, just putting out more quality, even more value to the, the industry, the little circle that I had. And I just realized the power of video. So, um, and I started to seek more compensation because if I'm like, hey, if I, if I enjoy it, I'll do this for free. Why not get paid to do it? You know, um, so created that business and it was going very well. I started getting clients outside of basketball, um, but I had no direction. No, I was just just kind of floating about between, you know, different YouTube, whatever you might find. And I, it was a, another defining moment, I would say, after I decided I really wanted to. And I, and I still stay around basketball now. I, I can't help it. I love it and I love helping people. So I do train youth on the side, which is um, it's going pretty well. I've helped a lot of people. Their parents love me. Kids love me. But um, a defining moment when I decided, hey, and I realized, hey, I can't do this all myself. I, I want to say about, about 15 to 16 months ago, I made the leap of faith to hire a mentor that has that has, has been there, done that, knows all the problems that I could face. And at the time, I did not have the money. I think he he was charging. Um, I think it would have been about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars a month um, for me to work in this program, and I didn't have that in cash at the time um, that I wanted to spend on that anyway. And, and something that I prayed about and something told me, look, coaches have always helped you your whole life. Just do it. They've been there. They've done it. Just do it. And I, and I, I financed it and I was just like, all right, I'm going to go for it. And literally a month in, he changed my whole business around my whole life. <laughs> like I, I wasn't even friends with the program and everything changed. And I had already started making that money back. So um, that, that's why I tell everybody that was the turning point of my career because I would have been floating along this, this little comfortable path that I thought was, you know, I was doing something, but I took that leap of faith and it just, I'm a huge risk taker. I, I'm big on taking risks. So, that's one I can say that I, I, I'm very grateful for. So now <clears throat> he put me in a position to where I am holding myself to a higher standard. He helped me realize that the work I do is quality, um, that people need it and there's a need for it. Not, you know, I need other people like, Hey, you know, I got a, I got a nice camera. I can do this for you. It's like, Hey, honestly, your business needs my company, you know? And, I'm going to do everything I can to get you the most out of it. But I want to let you know that, look, you are missing out without having this product. So um, I can definitely say that's, that's one of the best decisions of my life. And, and I don't plan to stop investing in that further in education and getting that help from a business coach. And, and now things are moving very steadily and I'm growing very well. So. What was the biggest change that he made or where was the, place where you had to trust them the most and you saw kind of a, a result on the other side. Yeah. So biggest change at the time I had what was just a portfolio. I had, I was, I was really a one man band. I was just the guy with the camera and he was like, nobody with any real money or any, that or if you want to do this professionally, you have to present yourself professionally. So he took me through everything. And, and there was times where he was saying, hey, you need to buy this. And I was like, oh, I already, I already paid you. I don't know if I can buy anything else. Um, I had to fix my website, make it, make it presentable to where I'm right there neck and neck with competition, um, you know, presenting myself as a reputable company because 
customers look at that if they they're like how can i hire a creative that doesn't even have quality graphic appearance you know what i mean so that was one of the things um another thing is positioning myself as an asset because at first i was just that 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 guy who can do a video for you i was you know not positioning myself to where hey educating businesses business owners entrepreneurs on why they need this service and why they don't just need a video the a nice cool video but they need to tell their story and help their clients to understand exactly what i'm helping them understand why they're valuable um so that was that was the biggest thing that that he really pushed me and then another thing is he was like your portfolio is really good um but you need something even better like something amazing and it and it and i i went out he's like go shoot <laughs> a video this way by these lights by this get this audio equipment and and make this and and show people what you really can do and i was kind of i was worried because i was like i've never i've never done anything like this you know um not to this scale with this much involved and then I, I went and did it and i thought it was great and brought it back to him i was like hey i did it and he was like nope not good enough <laughs> i just spent like a a whole week on that video he was like go redo it and he it was it was a grind but i appreciate him being open honest and very transparent with me and um and once i really put that effort in brought back that product um that same product was was the same video that i have had clients refer to and be like hey i like the way you did this video can you make me something like this can we work on something like that so i definitely appreciate that grind it was i can tell you it was a it was such a struggle i was, i didn't think i would make it uh but he pushed me and i'm completely grateful for that so wow so did you show him your latest video or the one you made for us yet i have I, he's been super busy with other students but i will send that to him i need to send that to him he'll definitely like it because he 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 i can say he's been extremely proud of me and that's that's a great feeling even though he's not quite um a, a close person in my life that i can say i've built through relationships he was a paid mentor but he still was he he was kind of brought into my my circle so to say um so anything that he said he's won emmys and everything so i, I value everything he says so um and i do like i do like give him shout outs his name is michael stern by the way um he has a program called the ultimate video producer but um yeah so anyway um just to know i i I've, I've had that that drive since basketball and i had that same drive with the video business and he's like man everything that i market my product of what my students can be you have become you have embodied it and i love it so just to know that he's like proud of me and i've you know pushed that push to that that standard that he looks to uphold is is great so but no, i definitely will send him send him that video poster child i see it man yep, yep. so how much did you say you spent on the coaching again i i spent close to four thousand uh and that was only it was only that cheap because he saw something in me and Took a risk. he saw how much i really was hungry and he gave me actually a discount i think it was actually closer to about five thousand so and so how long did it run we it was three months we would do every once every other week for a little over an hour um and he would that that would be the personal like face-to-face -face meetings and then in between there would be like a ton of content educational pieces stuff like that nice uh, yeah. yep and how did you i'm sure he's not the only person you talked to how'd you pick him good point uh good question so he was definitely not the first person i saw offering that service um uh, i was I was looking, I was skeptical, looking at different things. I actually came across a Instagram social media ad and I saw his program and I have signed up for other little free trial courses, little free calls. Um, but what he was offering was a, a free strategy call. And I was like, 
okay, I get to talk to this guy. And just, he's like, yeah, you just get to talk to me. Any questions you have, you'll get them answered. I was like, okay, 30 minutes, I'll spare my time. See what this, I mean, he won an Emmy. Let me see what this guy has to say. Um, so gave him a call. And on that call, he was, every, everything else was like, hey, get my course, do this. It was so pushy, so salesy. Um, this, he was laid back. He was just asking me questions. He's like, yeah, show me some of your stuff. Just so, so relatable. That was one of the biggest things I say in a good coach, but he was very relatable. Um, and he was like, hey, you know, with what you have, you're right there, but you just need a little extra push. And I'm not going to push you to do it, you know, but I've seen it. I know you, because at the time I was, he told me the price and I was like, whoa, I didn't know it would be that. And I was like, well, let me just go uh, try to make some calls and do some things and I'll come back and see how I can make it work. He's like, okay, well, I'm not pushing you, but I've seen this happen before. You you might just leave. You start thinking about how you can do it yourself. You can get it done. You can save that money. And the truth is, man, Derek, you're not going to be able to do it yourself. You're not going to be able to do it cheaper. Um, and you're just going to keep going on that same path. He's like, but no push at all, you know. And I was like, no, no, no. I, <laughs> but he didn't know on my end. I was like, no, I literally have to call my credit card company, see how I can move some stuff around because I'm <laughs> going to do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but, I'm already in, buddy. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what you're getting yourself into. But uh, and I don't think he was expecting me because he's, he's had several students, but not all of them have that that twice the type of drive, you know, and not to say anything about myself, but when I say I'm going to do something, I, I do it. So um, whether it's right or wrong, but no. So yeah, he, I, I made that happen. I made, moved some things around and he was like, okay, great, man. Glad to get started with you. But the biggest thing of why I chose him was he didn't push me. He actually listened to what I was saying. I just pushing all about himself. I don't remember him talking too much about himself at all, actually on that call. Um, and he he understood my problem pretty much. And that's that's one of the things you hear about sales. And that's some of the best salesmen don't tell you anything too much about themselves. They're trying to solve your problem. And, you know, I think that's that's a huge thing. So yep. So now you got the new frame and you're you're working through it and you're working the system and the plan that you guys came up with. You're seeing the results. Um, mm -hmm. what's most important to you right now? Right now was most important to me. Um, so he showed, he showed me the different phases of, of how you progress through your business. So I've gone through the phases of establishing my, my professional clientele, my portfolio. Um, so the next steps that I'm looking to do is to keep that going, build upon that, those projects and get those projects in more frequently, but also building automated systems. So um, that, that's, that's most important to me um, because as I originally stated, I have my corporate side of work and then my more creative narrative side. Um, as a production company, I, I can do anything related to video. So um, that passion is, those passion projects are definitely a more important thing to me right now. So getting to a point where I can still provide every single client that I have with not just one-off value, but continue value. Um, through the team members that I work with and the systems that we have, the, the marketing strategies, and then also freeing up time for those passion projects to where I can still get that quality and still start pushing towards where I'm helping business owners. And, I, and I've, I've had some clients that have been really thrilled with what I've been doing, but, but I really want to get to where I'm helping people in life, you know, in happiness and, and making the right decisions for themselves and, you know, and not, not pushing my religion on anybody, but as a Christian, you know, if I want to present that, that happiness, just because I found my happiness and my, and my beliefs, you know, if anybody's open to it, I like to share them with it. If they're, if they're lost, if they need that help. So I'm looking just to share, share some of those, those i guess i'll say share some of that that belief and that happiness with others um 
not only through religion, but just through a lot of different aspects. Um, and that's, that can be like a whole other <laughs> long thing of how exactly I'd be doing that. But more of those, more of those creative projects will be with moral stories, a lot of moral stories that are very entertaining and also very moving, inspirational. So, yep, yep. Very few people are in that niche that actually have real talent. And I guess I have to be careful how I say that. Well, I guess I don't really have to be careful how I say oh, yeah. that. But, you know, yeah. the fact that <laughs> people who are doing, I, I guess that space just doesn't pay as well as the other spaces. And so if the person is really worried about comp, then they're going to go where the comp is and it's not so much in that space. So I, I think you'll find your your niche and be able to stand out well there. Hey guys, back in 2016, me and the team decided to formalize Dreamcatchers as an organization that can help people achieve their wildest dreams. If this is you, please visit our website at dreamshouldbereal.com in order to find out the details of our services and how we can help you become a Dreamcatcher. Talk to you soon. So the coach is a defining moment for you more recently. If you think across your life, can you think of two more defining moments that um, have really shifted your life and taken you to the next level? Two other defining moments that have shifted my life. Um, so I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. And for any of you listening that know about Memphis, depending on where you live is not the greatest <laughs> place to live at all. I, I think it's one of the top 10 worst cities to be in as far as the crime rate and, you know, just the overall wealth in the city. So at a young age, about nine years old, uh, my parents made the decision to get out of there. Uh, we we watched so many of our family members just go down the wrong path. There aren't many good role models, anything like that. So moving here to Georgia, where I am now, opened up so many opportunities and I was very resistant at the time, but I realized it was for the best of us because I've, I've moved here. And not to say that anybody has to be a product of their environment, you're a product of your choices as well, but I just know when you have a better environment, when you have better role models, that a lot better things can happen. So that was a defining moment, just coming here, getting that just that new environment and being able to have valuable role models and not have any distractions and and you know like i said since since being here i've watched some of my family back in memphis just plummet and taking terrible choices and that's one of the reasons why i really want to help people so much and i think that is once again a defining moment is it was a stretching moment but um just showing what one small decision can make and a change is why I really want to help people. I just want to show people it's like not that simple, but it can be like just you just got to switch. So um, you got to sometimes you got to get up and move, relocate and just switch the whole mindset. So uh, that's a defining moment for me. It's just when I it wasn't at the at the time it was. But now looking back, I just realized how valuable that was, how getting yourself out of that baggage, out of those problems, out of those things that's pulling you down. Um, that's another defining moment. Um, I will say in college, when I was, I was playing basketball, I was a freshman. I just <clears throat> was like all-star standout on my high school team and going into college, <clears throat> That wasn't the case. <laughs> so I had like two all Americans in front of me and I had always worked hard, but then I realized that wasn't even it. I had to turn it up. I had to work smarter. I had to do more. So um, there is a combination of things that happened there. Just realizing that, you know, once you get to college playing basketball or sport on any level that, yeah, you were greatest. Right. But in order to get better, all right, you have to, and this ties into the powwow, right? You have to put yourself around people at a higher level than you at 
that are better than you, not you're always the best in in your circle. So that was one thing. And another part of that that I had to realize, okay, I got around this new circle. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna work with these guys. I started getting better exponentially fast. And some things that happened, <laughs> I let that get to my head. So <clears throat> I went into college my freshman year doing computer engineering. Um, I was always smart. Uh, I took AP class in high school, like 3.9 GPA, all that. So um, actually, James from the Powerwall told me not to say I was smart. I am smart. <laughs> you know, so I'm very smart, um, especially in high school. Um, so I went to computer engineering and I was chasing money. I'm like, hey, I looked up careers, top three careers, paying careers in the U.S., computer engineering, engineering. I'm like, okay, I'll do this. I'm smart. I can do it. First year, I had like a three. 3.0, 3.5 GPA. Then I started getting good at basketball. <laughs> and I started saying, screw school. And people were coming up telling me, hey, you're my favorite player and, and all of this. And, and I just started getting so consumed in that. And um, I just let the computer engineering just drop. And that was a terrible decision in hindsight. Um, and, and, and that, the, defining moment though for me is just combined with knowing how to increase my circle but to have the right motive because I was chasing computer engineering for money I was chasing basketball for money and neither one of them took me to where I really wanted to be um so I, I would say I I recognize just that was another defining moment of where I realized you can still give your all in something. There's great people out there. There's hardworking people. You can give your all into something. You can put yourself in the right circle. But if it's not where you need to be, if you haven't really thought about it, prayed about it, if you're religious, it's, it just probably won't pan out for you. And you'll put a lot of time into something that isn't your passion, isn't where you need to be in life. Um, so that was something I had to really assess just that whole point in my life of, okay, I need to really, yes, I'm very talented and very in a lot of different areas, but what's going to make me happy? What's going to impact others? What is my, my purpose? So, um, those, those two moments were very key in my life. So, wow. So you got the big head. <laughs> yeah my my gpa went from above a 3.0 to below a one I, I had never got below an a or b on anything and below an a until college and then i flunked out of like everything i i got my head was that big <laughs> and i actually doing so well in school and my like test scores are so high that I was getting academic scholarships way before basketball scholarships. So the way uh, basketball works and coaching is a lot like in business. You have to budget the money that you're giving in there that you have. So he accounted for me having that academic scholarship. He's like, great, Gary, amazing. He's good. And he has an academic scholarship so I can pay less for him and go use that money for somebody else. So when I lost the academic, he was like, hey, you know, I spent that money, <laughs> so I can't really give it to you since you lost it. And um, so I had to make a huge decision. Like, well, I can't, <laughs> I can't do anything with that, with that, that money that's, that's sitting there. So I had to transfer. And the thing is, I transferred to a Christian school with a lot less distractions. And because uh, I was in Florida, my freshman and sophomore year, I was in Florida, five minutes from the beach. 30 minutes from Orlando. So you can only imagine the distractions that I had. Um, then I moved all the way up to East Tennessee, Bristol, <laughs> small city, nothing there. So I, I couldn't help but just focus. My grades jumped back up. My basketball jumped back up, won a championship and everything. So it's, it's mindsets, mindsets, mindsets are huge. Wow. So yeah. Some people could, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that that could have went, right? You could have packed it in and decided, hey, if this didn't work out, I'm, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm better than this. Or 
you can double down and get back on the mission and finish. And it sounds like you you chose plan B, you know, you Yeah, I took the took the red pill. <laughs> <laughs> I took the red pill. That's a bet. That's a bet, man. I appreciate you being vulnerable with that. I don't know many people who actually want to share that story. Um Yeah, man. I, I try to I'm I'm a big believer in just being transparent. Some people say I'm too transparent, but mm-hmm. Old cliche saying, treat people how you want to be treated. And I want to, I prefer to know the, the real people. And I always have that facade or that's why I'm, I love social media, but I hate it. Social media only, people only post when things are going amazing. <laughs> when they, when girls have all their makeup on, when you look their absolute best, you know, those are the only things people want to share. I think that's why mental health is such a big issue. Sorry to get off topic, but you know, no, no, I, I just no, keep, going I'm, topic. keep it up, keep going. Yeah, I think people just need to be themselves, express what's inside, stop hiding it. Like you can't share everything with people, but you when you can share it, that means you're bigger than it. You've getting past, you've gotten past it, but if you can't share it still, then it still has a hold on you. It's still eating you up so in order to be bigger than it you need to put it out there i can put it out there because i learned from it that's not me anymore you know um it was a big part of my life a big turning point so um yeah that's why i find i can be transparent because it, it's, it helps me it's a tool for me i guess when i know i can put it out there that's how i know it is no longer a burden or doesn't have any shackles on me so I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So tell me about the three biggest lessons. I feel like some of them are woven into the story you just shared, but Mm -hmm. break it down for me. If you had to pick three lessons, what are the three biggest lessons you've picked up over the years? Over the years? um, Biggest thing is listen to the people that have been where you want to be and just listen, just listen, just listen and learn, wake up every day and learn something new. Um, it wasn't until I started listening and being open to coaching from elders from people, those wiser that I really started growing and getting better. So that was, that's one thing I had to learn in life. Um, another thing is just realizing that, of course you're talented in a lot of different areas you're blessed like that a lot of people are talented but really figuring out one what you have a plan looking at your resource and what's really going to make you happy and what's going to impact others um that was probably the best path that you in life for you in life so like i said i know a lot of people that struggle like oh i can i can sing i can play basketball i can draw different very good things but what's gonna set you up for happiness what's gonna help other people gain happiness and have that purpose and and another lesson that i've learned is the biggest lesson is sometimes you you're a product of your decisions and your environment but your choice to stay in that environment that's your choice. You can always make that choice. So just changing the circle of people that you're around. Um, I can't say a lot of those problems that I struggled with in my first few years of college was because of the people I was putting myself around. So that, la- that, that might just be the most important, honestly, putting yourself around the right people that, you know, if they're pushing you towards a bad path, making you make terrible decisions or not, pushing you to think higher or to make just put yourself in the right position then you need to stay away from so definitely those those three have been big keys in my life man i can dig it okay 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 Mm -hmm. now one of my favorite things to ask people is what are you most grateful for? Honestly, and and I don't know if this, not everybody can relate, um, but I'm just 
grateful for the way my life has gone. I feel like I've been very blessed throughout my life. Not everything has been perfect, but for some reason, I've always been able to 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 find a way or to to overcome. Um, so I'm grateful for having that quality. I don't know. I don't know if everybody can relate. I know. I know some people. I mean, we all overcome things, but. I'm just grateful for not letting any situation in my life consume me or take, take over. Um, and I don't know if I can, uh, you know, contribute that to the people I've had around me, praying for me, family, bringing me up. But that is just one thing that I'm grateful for, just that ability or the, the life that we're in to be able to, overcome when there's lows there's resources in today's age there's resources to help you overcome um so that that that's one thing i just the most grateful because like i said i've been through some things that if i would have stayed there my life would just be over but I always get a way out so nice. so some of all the people the resources i've had in my life to help me out of my lows i guess so that's deep and I mean, I think everybody can relate. It's just a matter of whether or not they're being honest with themselves, right? So, yeah. you know, some people pride themselves on being self-made and whatever other words you want to slide into that. But the reality mm -hmm. of every situation is that we end up arriving where we are because of the people who are around us. And, you know, it's some of us feel like it's by happenstance, but there's all intentionality in it. Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate you having that type of awareness, especially at such a young age. Um, so where do we go from here? I think the, the best place to go, so I'm gonna be selfish right now. So you came okay. to the tower, you get, you get this phone call from some strange guy on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> says, hey man, I had on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's in the mountains in some remote town that nobody knows where it is. Are you yeah. there? And it's going to be the hardest assignment you've had so far. And <laughs> you tell me with, with, with complete confidence, I can absolutely deliver the product that you need. Mm -hmm. Like, are you sure? You, you, you don't even know what we're doing. You have zero <laughs> hesitation in your voice to deliver or your willingness to travel. And mm -hmm. you just wanted to send the paperwork over to get the thing locked in. And I admired mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. Now that you showed up and you've been through the process, you've made your deliverable, what, mm -hmm. I guess, what was the most shocking thing about the powwow? And then the follow-on question to that is, was making the video as hard as you thought it might be before you got started? Okay, so biggest thing with the powwow. Um, so I've 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 seen where people get together, entrepreneurs get together. They have their retreats and different things. I've shot for so many people with fortune 500 companies it's just great people smart people wealthy people um but i've never seen them all in a room connecting um and not not to everybody the power i was just at that level but there's a lot of you know smart men um ambitious men that have you know made it very far in life and had some successes just the fact that they were all in one room opening up to each other people people don't give each other that time like that, you know, in life when you're just chasing, 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 you're so consumed in what you're doing, always busy. But the fact that people are like, Hey, I'm taking three days. We're going to sit through, work through our problems. We're going to completely listen to other people. Every each person had about an hour or so. I wasn't there for the, the whole part of it, but they had an hour. Everybody was just giving their all anything they can pull out of their mind, any genuine thoughts that they had, each person at that powwow was, was able to receive that. So that was a little shocking to me. It was like, wow, all these people genuinely care, are really trying to help each other and, um, and listening to each other. And that, that was just, that was just something I haven't really 
at least experience or I didn't know <laughs> when he told me, he's like, yeah, we're going to have a business retreat. There's going to be some guys who send me the email list, the attendee list. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Just, uh, you know, another one of those business videos where, <laughs> where it'll be some interviews, some B-roll, and uh, we'll make it look cool. But I didn't know how powerful it would be, and I wasn't prepared for it to be that powerful. So I, it was, I, I can't say it was... I had to go different. I tried to go traditional <laughs> with with the okay. Let me get the interviews and some B roll. But I was like, man, this video has to match the power of this event. So I had to rewrite. I had to, like I said, I, I sent you that first version. And I was like, hey, this is this is what all my other clients have been used to. This is what they are looking for. But none of my other projects have been as powerful. Any any event that I've done, I'm like. And I sent it and and I still I put that I like I told you I put that that hold on myself and you were like, hey, nope. <laughs> Have greater freedom and and I was like, okay, yeah, that's I need to match this power. So um that that was it was shocking, very shocking. Like I said, I was not I told you I was not expecting it. and you told me uh you were like, Yeah, you can jump in and be a part if you want and I wasn't I was like, yeah, no, I'll just stick to shooting it, whatever. Um, <laughs> but once I got there and realized just what everybody was sharing, I couldn't help but just dive in and and join in. So that was that was that was great. I love it. I love the power. So what made you finally dive in? Because I mean, you held out. I mean, it was. You got there at six fifteen in the morning, and I mean, I don't think you really said anything till like seven. <laughs> well um there was this session so there wasn't there was a couple things there wasn't quite room for me at the table at first and then you know just my personality I'm always work 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 I wanted to you know I didn't want to get caught up in the event and not be shooting and getting all everything I needed so um I like to show my clients that I'm professional and I'm about doing what I'm there to do so I wanted to make sure that I you know, got everything I needed. Um, but there were just some things being said at, at one point. I'm like, wow, I can, if they're helping, they're here to help. There's some things I feel like would help. And I just couldn't hold that in. That's my whole being is starting to help people. So I finally piped up. It was, it was, I don't know if you saw, but it was stewing in me like for the longest oh, yeah. time. I was just waiting for my moment, <laughs> waiting for my moment to pipe up. But uh, No, you came uh, in and you asked me on the one-on-one. I was like, no, 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 no. This isn't how this goes. You got to wait till everybody. Yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah. It was your so, time uh, in the hot seat, so. Yep, yep. But no, I, I when we when we got to the part where it was the, the show and tell part, I believe, that's where I really, I was like, yeah, I got, I got room, you know, I got room to make my entrance, so. <laughs> yeah. yep. That was really tight. It was, it's crazy because James was like, I don't know how you picked him, but I'm glad you did because he needed to be here. And yeah, yeah. Nobody saw this was before the video came back. This was, you know, just having the right people in the room. That's what it's all about, man. Yep. So yep. and was the so was the video harder than you thought it was going to be? Or I mean, you said it you went and kind of did what you do for your traditional corporate clients, but I mean, when you were trying to piece everything together after experiencing it, what what'd you think? Did was I being dramatic when I, I summed up the task on that Sunday evening when we were talking? Yeah, so remember, remember you were like, "How good are you?" And I was, I'm always confident. Like, what do you mean, how good am I? I'm good. <laughs> and then um, I was just saying, I was like, you know, I'm like, I want to try to make it to where people can feel as much of this as possible because I, I remember I told you that like people might have to just really be here to feel this and. And it took, and that's why I spent so much time on the music. Music, for the people that don't know, music is everything. You listen to it when you're happy. Even when you're happy, it can make you sad. So it took a lot. That the, the hardest part of that was finding the right music for this video because the first music was, it wasn't it. But um, you gave a lot of good feedback, which was good. Um, yeah, the video was harder than I thought, just as far as, you know, like I, storytelling is huge. That's part of the, that's one of the biggest things. And 
and what made it so difficult is because I've been in this corporate space for so long. All the story I have to tell is, okay, this is what we do. <laughs> this is who we are. This is how we can help you. But it's, it's already out there. It's already known. There's no mystery. You know, it, it, it sells itself almost the products a lot of times that I'm making video for. But this, this is, there had to be a true story. There had to be a lot more emotion. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the, like it had to be really powerful. A lot of videos I make are informational. You know, they, they tell a story. Um, I try to be as creative as possible, but with this, I had to get really, really creative. That's why I was, I was a big fan of this video, this project, though. So Yeah, that's why I was wondering if you sent it to your mentor. I hope you get it over to him. And he, yeah, yeah. He that pat on the back and says, man, that's, <laughs> that's from where you were before we started. So yep. My last question, man. We, we've been rocking for a little while and uh, mm -hmm. i got to wrap it up. I'm more probably over time, but it'll be okay. I'll just do extra on the editing. Um, what's the one thing you want people to take away from this talk if they don't hear anything else? One thing. Uh, you know, I will really say once again, I want to keep going back to that because just, you know, for the most part, people can only, that's the whole point of you interviewing different people. Everybody has a different story. My story, the things that have shaped my life have been the people I put myself around and the people I've leaned on. Um, and like I would, I would, I would definitely say for people who are struggling to find, yes, you may realize you need to find a circle. Um, but there's things like the power hour or whatever else you can find. Improve your circle. Go learn something new from somebody that, that there's a lot of people that can give you advice, but if people are where you want to be, learn from them, learn from, right? You don't want to learn science from a math teacher. You want to learn math from the math teacher. So um, learn from the experts and fix their circle relationships, networking, everything is huge. Um, I can I can say for my life and a lot of other people's lives, I know it's been a huge change. So if you don't listen to anything, I said just know that. <laughs> so. awesome. awesome. Thanks for being a guest on the Dreamcatchers podcast, Derek. Hey guys, Thanks if you having me. If you made it to this point in the interview, you really like what we're doing. So do me a favor and jump over, hit the subscribe button on your podcasting platform or YouTube, and give us a five star rating and review. Derek, it's been awesome. So glad you joined the tribe, man. It's good to have you in. You're a regular yep. contributor in the group chat, and I can't wait to release this episode along with the video. You put it out there, but I've been holding on to it, and this is just <laughs> yep, yep. All right, man. Talk to you soon. All right, see you. If you want to learn more about Dreamcatchers, please visit the website at dreamsubreal.com. If you can think of someone who would benefit from these types of opportunities and are willing to share what we're doing with them, we would greatly appreciate it.